Okay, continuing on today with another addition for our Laplace transform playlist. We have here the Laplace transform of just natural log of t. I think this is probably the most interesting Laplace transform I've done so far. You don't usually see this one in your Laplace transform table. So, so what I'm gonna do is let's just start with our definition of the Laplace transform. So we have that a Laplace transform is gonna be just the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus st times f of t, where it's just gonna be this thing. So in our case, this is gonna be natural log t dt. And how I wanna do it is let's use Feynman's trick on this. I'm gonna create some parameterized function. I wanna find a way, something simpler that's gonna give me this natural log t. What I can do is we can start with, for our function, we'll create something with our e minus st. And then for this other term, I'm just gonna add in here, this t to the a dt. And the reason for doing this, as we'll see in a minute, is this right here is gonna produce this ln t, but also we have a way to get at this value because this right here, this is just gonna be the Laplace transform of t to the a. And for this, we have a formula. Sometimes you'll see this as a factorial over s to the a plus one. But with a factorial, we're usually thinking of a as an integer. We don't want that here. We want a to be continuous variable. So what we'll do is, We'll set this, we can write this instead as gamma of a plus one, which is the same thing as a factorial when a is a positive integer. And then we can go ahead and differentiate this thing, but when we do it, we're differentiating with respect to a. And when we do it, we'll differentiate both sides. We'll differentiate this with Feynman's trick, but we'll also just differentiate on the right side as well. So differentiating over here, we'll do this as a partial. We'll bring it inside the integral over here. And then this e minus st is just gonna be a constant. So I'll bring this over here, but then we're gonna to wanna to differentiate this t to the a. On the right side, when we differentiate this, this is just gonna be quotient rule. So we'll first differentiate the first part. We're gonna have gamma prime of a plus one. We wouldn't need the chain rule, but the derivative of a is just gonna be one. So we, worry about, so we won't worry about that. Then times this stuff minus, just bring down this gamma a plus one then the derivative of this part is just gonna be s a plus one, ran out of space, but then keep in mind we're differentiating with respect to a, so what's gonna happen is the natural log of s is gonna pop out there. And then we just need our denominator squared, so we'll just write this in, s to the a plus one, all squared. Then for the derivative here with respect to a, t is just a constant, so this is gonna be the same thing as like when we get the derivative of three to the x, when you do this, you just get three to the x ln three, or whatever constant base you wanna choose there. So doing the same kind of thing here, we get t to the a ln t e minus st dt. But now the thing to notice with what we found here for our f prime a value is it's really similar to what we have here. We've got e minus st in common, we've got ln t in common. We don't have t to the a in our original problem, but if you think of it like, if we create t to the zero right there, that's just the same thing as one. So when a is equal to zero here, that is gonna get us back to our goal, the Laplace transform of t. So all we need for this solution is just gonna be f prime at zero. So really all we're gonna to need to do to finish this off is just take zero, plug it in here, and then that's gonna be our answer. Let me make a little more space and we can work on this here. Okay, now one thing we can do before we work on our f prime zero value is we can actually cancel out. We have this s to the a plus one in common here and here, but we can cancel it, so we can cancel with one of these. And then for f prime of zero, this could almost be really easy because we could just plug in zero. We could plug in zero here and here. The only trouble is this is a little more complicated, this gamma prime of a plus one. We could handle this here a few different ways. We could actually do the derivative of the gamma function, then it would be like applying Feynman's trick again. We kind of would get another integral, we could actually do another integral. So there's kind of a long way to do this. You could kind of do out all the steps. I kind of want to shortcut this part and use a formula and relate this back to the di gamma function. Okay, so over here to the left in blue, we have this definition for the gamma function with an integral in it. And you can kind of see the gamma function, right, is just this part right here. So when you differentiate that, you kind of do basically what we just did at the beginning is this ln t pops out, and this is really our gamma prime. So you, kind of, so you can kind of go through the steps that way and see what's happening. But what I wanted to do instead was just use this formula over here to kind of, so because we can just rearrange this solving for gamma prime of z in order to just finish off our problem. 
So let me get rid of this and just on this equation, multiplying by gamma z on both sides, we get gamma prime of z is gonna just be equal to digamma z times gamma z. So then let's just rewrite our f prime of a using this formula right here, plugging this in for this, what's gonna happen now, but our z value is gonna be a plus one, so this is gonna become digamma a plus one, gamma a plus one minus gamma a plus one, natural log s over s to the a plus one. But now when we try to get our f prime zero value, what's gonna happen, everything's gonna simplify pretty nice. We're gonna have digamma one, gamma one here, just plugging zero in for the a's. Then we have another gamma one, natural log s, and then here we get s to the one, which is just s. But then using our formula that gamma, gamma of n plus one is gonna be just n factorial, this here, this gamma of one is like zero factorial or just one, so that part's going away. And then I think the only thing left to deal with is just this gamma of one value. You could memorize this value because it's you know, a very common value. If you don't wanna memorize this value, what we could do is we could just use, I think this is the easiest way, I don't know. We could use this series expansion for this and look at this definition of it. And so for this, our input in here, the Z, it's going right here. So we just need to plug in one into this formula right here. So when we do that, for di gamma one, we get minor, minus the constant plus this sum. This is gonna become one over n plus one. This now becomes, because we're plugging in one for the z, it becomes, again, one over n plus one. But all this here, this is just zero. So this all goes away, and our value for di gamma one is just gonna be minus Euler Mascheroni constant. This value, if you don't know, is something like 0 0.577. Of course, we have a minus in front. So putting all this together, I'm just gonna factor a minus up. So we've got a minus here, and now we have a minus here. So we'll factor minus out in front, Euler's constant plus natural log S over S, and that's it. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully at this point you can kind of see why I thought it was so interesting is we had to bring out a lot of tricks in order to do this one, just bringing out Feynman's trick and that gamma function and trying to simplify this. So there's a lot going on there. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.